Now that you've seen the basics of translation, rotation, and scaling, let's talk about putting them all together, and some of the complexities we brushed over at the beginning. When you do multiple transformations, the order makes a big difference. Here's an example program that demonstrates this fact. A rotation, followed by a translate, followed by a scale, does not give the same result as a translate, followed by a rotate, and then by a scale. You can look at it here. The red square is first rotated by 30 degrees at the origin, and then is translated on the newly rotated axis by 70 to the right and 70 down, and then scaled at its corner. The green square is first translated 70 to the right, 70 down, and then rotated on that point and scaled. Which order you use depends on what your desired effect is. Just keep in mind that you're moving the graph paper or coordinate system, not the object itself, and you should find an order that works for you. Every time you do a rotation, translation, or scale, the information required to do the transformation is accumulated into a table of numbers. This table or matrix has only a few rows and columns, yet through the miracle of mathematics, it contains all the information needed to do any series of transformations. And that's why the push and pop matrix have the word matrix in their name. What about the push and pop part of the names though? These come from a computer concept known as a stack. Push matrix puts the current status of the coordinate system at the top of a memory area and pop matrix pulls that status back out. The preceding example used pop matrix or push matrix and pop matrix to make sure that the coordinate system was clean before each part of the drawing. In all the other examples, the calls to those two functions weren't really necessary because there were no subsequent transformations afterward, but it doesn't hurt to save and restore the grid status. As a best practice, always use these functions when you're doing any transformations. There's also a reset matrix function. Reset matrix. And this function resets the matrix back to its very original state, or the identity matrix. But the push and pop functions are nearly always the better approach because they can be relative. So, want to learn more or review how matrices work in algebra? You can go through the matrices on Khan Academy, or in particular, the geometric transformations with matrices section right here. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next video.